everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Podful of Sunshine. I'm Diana. Greg here. What's up? Welcome back to episode number 22. Hey, Greg, guess who's back? Who's back? <laughs> the fucking snowbirds are back. Good. <sighs> Is it good? Because, God, they drive fucking slow. Like, I feel like when they come back, they're like, let's see how slow we can drive to make everyone else late to work. Maybe they're just driving slow because they want to drive slow. They don't have to be snowbirds. Yeah, no, they're snowbirds. And you'll recognize them because they're the ones driving 10 miles per hour below the speed limit. Mm, I like that. That makes for me really happy when oh people my do that. God, it infuriates me. It's like, move over, snowbirds. We're trying to get to work here. I know you're retired and don't have anywhere to be at a certain time, so move. When people are older, they start to drive slower. Your dad drives slow. Oh, he does. <laughs> He really does. Yeah. Um, so, hey, listeners, I want to apologize for last week's audio for the first half hour. My audio, I sound like I was in a cave. And honestly, like our mics seem to be temperamental. Like it seems to be like if I have it right in front of my face, I sound like I'm in a cave. So I apologize for that. I think it was perfect. Our sound was great last week. It wasn't. There was a time when I was editing and I was getting so frustrated with how I sounded that I almost made Greg and I redo the whole thing. And he's like, um, no. Yeah, that wasn't happening. I mean, wh- that would just be like, it would, wouldn't be the same. I mean, it how can you, same. it's not like we're acting here. I mean, how could we act the same way? I mean, I don't know. Knows? Maybe we would have, um, maybe, maybe it was better. Maybe we'd have better things to i don't know more input yeah well, who knows too bad we didn't do it um sorry sorry better luck next time but the audio this week is gonna be so much better so um hurricane michael struck a big hurricane jesus did you see the pictures before and after of like beach i saw the aerial Mexico? shots yeah, I didn't know there was even called a Mexico beach up I there. I didn't either. They kept saying beach Mexico, and I was like, did it hit Mexico? But look, here's the picture of the before and after. Oh, yeah, that's the picture I saw. Yeah, uh-huh. and it looks like a bomb went off, and well, it is, There oh was 145-mile-an-hour winds. That's pretty, and uh, that's a lot of wind. And I feel for the people, but all I got to say is thank God it didn't come towards us. One's coming towards Tampa. Not right this now? year. Oh, Maybe not next year, but... I mean, eventually. And they're just getting stronger. Can you tell that they're just getting stronger? That's yeah. it. Global warming. Global warming. It's real, people, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, so look out. <laughs> Hunker down. So remember our very first episode? Do you know, remember what it was titled? Yeah, I think it was about the, the, the royal wedding take two. N- no, it was the... <laughs> It was just the royal wedding. Well, but it's not like it's not the real royal wedding because I mean it's not like See, she's ever going to be princess. You're or... going off the outline, <laughs> but you're going off the outline where I wrote royal wedding 2.0. I'm actually not even looking at that one. I didn't even see that on that one. I haven't even looked at that <laughs> one yet. So there's a royal wedding this weekend, Princess Eugene. Oh, well, that's like royal wedding point seven five. No, I mean. It's... Not because who the hell is that? I'll tell you who it is. Remember, I was talking about Fergie in that episode. The singer. <laughs> no, no, you're right. The the person that's the royalty. I, I know, yes. I know this. Yeah. So it's, King, um, Queen or Prince Charles's brothers. Andrew, Prince yeah, Andrew. Yeah, whatever. It's Prince Andrew and the Duchess Fergie. It's their daughter, and I guess Fergie is an English name. Yeah, I think so. I don't know any American people. But I watched a little bit of the wedding. I watched a little bit of it when I got up Friday morning. Not the hype that's these other people. This who cares about this person getting married? This is like, this is like somebody that's been married seven times. You're like, okay, they're getting married again. I mean, so I haven't been married seven times. Well, I'm just saying it's 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 not important because. The real princess and the real prince got it's married a couple of years a royal ago. It's still wedding, and it's still exciting. Not as exciting as I mean, the other ones, though, because right. not, you can tell. I mean, there's not. You turned it off. Not as as, okay. as exciting as the other royal weddings, but exciting nonetheless. Yeah. And I watched a little bit of it, and it was 
Honestly, horrible, like you said. It I, was, no, it was just kind of awkward because, like, they're up there and they're, like, doing their thing. And, like, she keeps trying, Princess Eugene keeps trying to look at her fiancé and they've been together seven years. And kind of, like, she's smiling, like, all giddy and he won't even look at her. Who the hell is names their girl, Eugene? I thought her, that was a dude's name. Eugene. Oh. I don't know any men mm. named Eugene. I don't know any men n- named Eugene either, or women. But I, mean, I guess this princess's name is Eugene. Princess cool. Eugene. Well, that's very attractive. So anyway, it was a nice wedding. Her um, she got dress married. Was kind of whack. But here's something cool: is that she apparently has scoliosis, and she had surgery on it. I think when she was younger, and so she specifically asked for a dress that showed her surgery scar because she wants to bring more awareness to scoliosis. That's cute. I like that. It's like, uh, look at me. I mean, check it <laughs> look out. At me. This is still sexy. <laughs> it's Halloween time. I'm ready for the candy. God, I hate Halloween. Like, I think I might have some repressed Halloween memory, but I fucking hate it. Like, we haven't even gone and gotten the kids' costumes yet, and we really need to do that. No, we re- they're going to all be sold out. They're going to be, like, I know. That's why, ass. like, we need to do this sooner than later. They could just be football players or baseball players. <laughs> I mean, they could, but that'd be kind of lame. We could make them mask murderers. How could- does that dress? I mean, we have, like, one of our knives that we keep in the cutting board. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let's send our children out with a knife. Good idea, Greg. What could possibly go wrong? And they have a mask. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I think maybe one of my, like, things why I don't like Halloween is I remember when I was a kid, and obviously we lived in a very, very rural area. So, like, there was no walking the streets. It, It was your mom driving you from house to house because the space was so great. And so... My mom brought us to my Aunt Mary's one time. She was the slutty pumpkin. No. No. Dakota, can you stop huffing? She's huffing all the breath she can. She's been huffing a lot lately. She's so old. She's 12. And she just... No, no. Go lay down. She wants to come say hi. But anyway... So we went to my Aunt Mary's house, and on her porch, the porch had also a set of stairs that led down to the basement. And so we're knocking, and my Aunt Mary doesn't have the porch lights on because they never get trick-or-treaters. But, of course, my mom's bringing us there because it's her family. And my brother, like, tumbled down these fucking cement stairs to the basement. And oh, just, poor little guy. I just remember him screaming, and that's, <laughs> no, that's all not, I remember. That's not funny. I'm sorry. Not funny. I wonder. Hey, Brian, do you remember that? Because I do. Do you have any scars from that, Brian? Damn, that must have hurt. No, there are no scars. Like he wasn't seriously injured. He just. I just remember him falling down these stairs and just screaming bloody murder. Who knows? Years ago, he could have a could have had a concussion, and nobody really even would have known. Okay, concussion. That's that's not the same as a scar, bro. Or you know, if, if he you hit his head a, hard. No. I mean, all right. You're right. Maybe not. And then I remember another time I, in sixth grade, my mom let drove me downtown and let me go trick or treating with a downtown Utney, Maine. Downtown Utney, Maine. So we got to hit up like six houses on foot, <laughs> and one of them had a haunted house. And I don't even remember who I was with, but we're going through. And this is why I hate haunted houses because we're going through, and you know, someone jumps out and scares them, and one of the kids i was with because like i said i was in sixth grade like punches the guy in the stomach that's awesome and so all the lights turn on he's like you kids get out and like yelled at us like, oh <laughs> you ruined all the fun dude you could have just taken the punch for the team i mean you did scare these kids like, i felt like it was just a boy trying to be cool and it's just like you're just acting like an asshole can you just not yeah can you can not you not punch people which Brings me to the story. This comes out of Madison, Tennessee. A man has been stabbed in the arm at a haunted house in Tennessee, and an attraction employee has been suspended. So it was a worker that stabbed someone. I mean, did he have a real knife? Wow. No, he stabbed him with a fake knife. (laughs) I mean, I think it almost probably hurt more with a fake knife because 
it wouldn't be sharp. It would be like, oh, yeah. The Tennessean reports 29-year-old Jay Yochum was stabbed Friday night by a friend who had been handed a knife by a person thought to be a cast member. Yochum says he and his friends were attending Nashville Nightmare in Madison and had been chased by people with chainsaws and other weapons. He says they expected the knife to be fake, so she stabs me with it. Oh, it was a girl. And everything got really black. Yochum says the man who provided the knife started panicking, says he didn't know the knife was sharp. Nashville Nightmare organizers say they've suspended a male employee believed to be involved. Oh. And his arm required nine stitches. That's serious. At least it was just his arm. Yeah. yeah. Could have been his neck. Could have been his... No, that would have sucked. He probably would have died. There had been a murder trial. That would have been an interesting murder trial. That would have been interesting. haunted house murder. I mean, because like... And I wonder, so they knew these people. Like, why did they want to stab them? Well, they maybe they were just, you know, it's a haunted house. They were just playing. Let's me try to scare this person. I'm going to... Take a real knife and stab them? I'm going to attempt to stab them with a, a real knife that I think is a fake knife. <laughs> but I mean... Could you not tell it was a real knife? Did it look sharp to you? Yeah, I don't know. Or did it look like plasticky to you? Doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't. Well, that's, doesn't that's a shame. <laughs> so, so I got a voicemail this week, and I'm sure you got the same voicemail that... What day was that? We got a fucking voicemail from the middle school, which... You, everyone knows my reservations about sending Blake to middle school. And apparently they had law enforcement show up because there was a credible threat... The kids didn't know anything about it when I picked them up. There was a credible threat that was written on the bathroom walls. And so, like, law enforcement came, they investigated, and they found nothing. And so then they, you know, have to, and they send out a voicemail to everyone. But way to give us a fucking heart attack. It wasn't bad enough. Last week, they called and said that Blake's missing from first period. I'm like, excuse me, what? So, like, I get that call, and I am freaked the fuck out and like i'm so freaked out that i can't even pull up my app that tells me where blake is and it takes me about two minutes to calm down to like get my bearings and i call greg i still haven't checked the thing and (laughs) greg's sleeping he's like well call the school you know he's all normal about it so i called the school and i was like hey so my son just got a uh I just got a voicemail that my son's on first period and I'm kind of freaking out here. She's like, oh, I've gotten those before. It's okay. She's like, let me check. I was like, you know, I just listened to many to too many murder mystery podcasts. Like I watched too much Dateline, like, and I'm just worried that he made it to school, but he's not there. And then they called to the class and he was there. Oh, well, he was just learning. Jesus. But we'd give a mom a heart attack. Yeah. Also got a message this week saying Blake wasn't in fourth period. So he was skipping class, I guess, which, hanging out in the bushes probably. <laughs> which that was less concerning because by that time he was home, so I wasn't so concerned. But, yeah, I'm like, Blake, did you skip fourth period? And he's like, no, that's Jim. I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Who skips PE? <laughs> Nobody skips PE. Well, maybe he was hanging out in the bushes. He's just not, not telling us the truth. I'd whoop his ass. Um, I also wanted to talk about this Florida man that stole one million dollars in cable services. Did you hear this? I didn't hear it, but I looked at your um outline because I did look at it a little bit, but I didn't look like really look at it. I thought it said one penny in um cable service, and I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Or one dollar, not one million. So wow, that yeah, that's a lot. You want to read the story? Sure. Port Orange, Florida, 28-year-old from Port Orange, Florida, was charged with wire fraud after using more than $927,000 worth of cable services in 2015 and 2016 without paying for it, the FBI said. So check it. Um, What are you watching for $927,000? And that's what I'm saying. Even... Did you got you got Bright House? Do you got the can Seattle? Guarantee our cable bill for two to three years does not equal one million dollars. I mean, we could have even got every fight and like Sunday Ticket, MLB Network. Still wouldn't equal one million dollars. Still would not equal. So, investigators said Rishi Shamar ordered services from Time Warner Cable under a company name, 
with an address listed on the 19th floor of a building in Cincinnati, Ohio. Service was terminated after 90 days because no payment was received. Shamar opened another account under a slightly different company name, officials said. So basically, this guy sounds like he, um, it's a very vague story. Sounds like he basically just kept opening accounts and not paying. Sounds like us in sling. It does sound, but it's <laughs> free. Seven days free. So I don't know how many weeks in a row we wanted the, um, red zone and since we don't have cable we're like well sling has it and they offer you a seven day free trial so we use like my email greg's email blake's email gavin's email and then we went to go use a pod full of sunshine email and somehow they caught on to us i think what they caught on to us is that um the way we paid i think we only have so many ways we can pay for it so I think but that may have... But you tried to use a credit card that we never use. Like, we well, haven't used true. it in years. So I'm like, how yeah. do they know? And so I yeah. wonder if it has to do with, like, the IP address, huh. something. You're right, because I did use that one. The, the, yeah. The um, emergency, the world's ending the credit world's card. The world's ending credit card that we haven't used in probably five years. Yeah, it's probably canceled. That's probably why it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever had anyone eat your chips that you get so pissed off about or food? No, but I remember you did a couple of weeks back. Like, then some lady <laughs> ate your damn chip at a, a restaurant you went to, and you well, were fired up. I wasn't up. pissed off that she ate my chip. She took it off my plate, which, I mean, just don't do. If anyone was watching my Snapchat story last night on Friday, I actually um, was watching the episode of Friends that we discussed in there where, yeah, if you want to order a garden salad, don't eat my food. Yeah. Don't do it. But this is nothing like that. This is... A guy that essentially shot his cousin because he ate his salt and vinegar chips. And I mean, let's be honest, salt and vinegar chips are the best chips. Mm, they are really good. I don't know what kind is the best, though. Salt and vinegar. Well, I mean, the best salt and vinegar chip. Like, what brand? Oh, I like the Cape Cod. I know. That's what we get all the yeah. time. Um, it was a case of a salt, dot, 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 and vinegar. <laughs> That sounds something like uh, Metro News I One. I swear to God, that's how it's a fucking Robin it's Robin Shabatsky. And I appreciate a gr- good wordplay. So good for you, Huffington Post, because that is great. A South Carolina man is facing an attempted murder charge after police say he shot his teenage cousin after warning the victim not to eat his salt and vinegar potato chips. Ryan Langdale, 19, turned himself into deputies on Wednesday and was charged with charged with attempted murder, possession of a weapon during commission of a violent crime, and obstru- obstruction of justice. Police said that on September 29th, officers were called to the home where Langdale's cousin had been shot. Both he and the victim told deputies the shooting was self-inflicted and happened when the 17-year-old was cleaning a hunting rifle. The victim was rushed into surgery with life-threatening injuries before being transferred. But the story started changing after the victim recovered enough for further questioning. The teen told investigators that Langdale shot him after warning him not to eat his salt and vinegar chips. Don't touch my chips or I'll shoot you, Langdale allegedly told the victim. Where was this out of? Um, South Carolina, I think. Yeah, there's some rednecks there. Yeah, South Carolina. <laughs> like the fucking foothills of South Carolina. They're probably on the Appalachian Trail. They're probably... Sounds like real redneck stuff. I mean, I love my salt and vinegar chips and don't eat them, but I won't shoot you over it. I will eat them. <laughs> you have before. So, no. You want to talk about your story about the uh, trend of people putting signs on their baby strollers? Yeah, there's this new trend out. I'll read the article for you guys because you probably want to hear a little bit about it. With flu season just around the corner, many are taking some precautions to avoid getting sick. That's funny. You should get the flu shot. No. But anyway, some parents, especially those with newborns, are kicking it up a notch with some clever signs. And I think this is awesome. There's these signs that say, Stop. Your germs are too big for little me. Please look. Don't touch. Mommy thanks you very much. I know as when my kids were always little, I hated people that came up and like wanted to touch them when you're at the grocery store or you were shopping at Target. Oh, look at them. 
leave my kids alone. They don't know you. We don't know you. I know they're cute, but contain yourself. I, and these people are just saying, it's, it's like, it's one of those signs, don't trespass. trespass. It, that's what they're saying. I think I might be the only mom who it did not bother me when strangers came up to look at my baby. <laughs> because, like, I loved the attention they got because they were really fucking cute kids. And I knew it. And it's, I don't know, it never bothered me. Well, bothered me. You know, old ass people and young people <laughs> stay away from my kids when they're in their car seats. But here's a fun story. Do you know that, do you remember those, and they still have them, they're yellow caution signs and it says baby on board that kids or that moms put on their cars, mom and dads. Yeah, some dog moms put like dog ones on the car too. They have those too. So before I had kids, like I didn't realize the intention of them. I thought they were just bragging like, hey, look at us. We have a baby. And it's like, no one gives a fuck if you have a baby or not. And then... (laughs) I remember we had Blake, and we're driving down I I four. It's the first time that we have him on I four, which is a big old death trap. And I remember death saying trap. to you, "Oh my God, I just want a sign in our window that says we have a baby here." And it's like a light bulb went off. I was like, "Oh, that's what those yellow signs are for, baby on board." I gotcha. I didn't realize what they were actually for until we had a kid. I thought people were just being like, "Hey, look at me! I have a baby. It's a baby in the car." Yes, yeah. See, I- <laughs> Never really fully thought about that until you said that. That, that makes a lot of point. Oh, wow, shit. We have a baby on board. Don't right, be an asshole around, around Don't us. Don't be an asshole around us. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. So, I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. That's some of those, like, dog moms, though, like, when they have their, like, oh, my um, uh, little chihuahua long hair or whatever it's called. <laughs> Schnauzer is in the car. Um, please be careful. Chihuahua long hair. That's what this title of this episode is going to be. Pod full of. And, and that's what I. They you see those signs too, but I mean. But I mean, calm down. It's a fight. Like dogs and babies are different, and maybe people. Well, they were just kids. stealing the thunder from the signs. Yeah. Yeah, because they were like a good sign, you know. Everybody looks at them. Yeah. So remember last week we were talking about that painting that after it was sold went through a shredder. They say it's going to be worth more money now than it was it worth. It sure is. The worth of that painting has gone up. and the Good guy, for the guy that bought it. The guy that bought it decided, hmm, I'm actually going to keep this. Yeah, good, good idea, guy. Yeah, that is oh. a great idea. Mm, I like it. Now, what would have happened, like, say this video of the painting getting shredded didn't go viral. I want to know what would have happened then. Well, I mean, depends how many paint... Because gurus were there. Maybe you they're... are at the mercy of something going viral, like for something like that. Because if it didn't go viral, it would have been like worthless. What would they have done? I mean, I don't think they would have done anything. I guess the painting would have just went on and done its thing. It had been shredded, and the, the guy would have had it. So, well, would they have made him pay for it? That's what I'm saying. Like, they're not. He paid for it though this time. He's keeping it. Well, yeah, this time. But I'm saying if it didn't go viral, what would have happened? Like, they're not going to sell a shredded painting. Well, don't you think he was like, um, don't you think like he paid for it probably pretty soon after it was bought? So, I mean, it's like it was already paid for. Was it like something that he could like, um, you know, say, hey, I paid for this, but it's not the same product that I was going to buy. And I, I we mean, we'll never know. So, I mean. The guy may have already paid for it before it went viral. So, I mean, he was just lucky. He was lucky. I mean, because it's one of those sales sales are final. wonder how much that painting will go for now. Guess No returns. Stay tuned for the update. No returns. All right. Well, let's get on into our normal segments. First up, oh, Florida. Oh, Florida. (laughs) Oh, Florida. Oh, Florida. You want to go first, babe? Oh, Florida. I will go first. So, let's get it started. Get this party started. Let's get this party started. Okay. So, um, this is out of Old Polk County, Florida. Polk County. Actually, I think this is road is pretty close to our house. But anyway, Polk woman... Who said she stabbed husband while slicing pizza charged with murder? And 
I could read this whole story for you, but it's just... I will read the whole story yeah, for you. Yeah, start it because I have input too. So on Monday morning in June, so this is a little while away, but she was just, I actually think they just convicted and like charged her. So anyway, following more than three months of investigation, Fittenden was arrested Wednesday and faces charges of second degree murder in her husband's June 25th death. At the time, Fitterin said the stabbing was accidental. Authorities, however, said her story changed every time she told it, and the medical examiner ultimately ruled the death a homicide. Well, you know what else changed the story? Because we sent the same story to each other, but my headline was that she told the investigators that she accidentally slipped and s- stabbed him to death. And that's one of her stories. She, she and, it's, and it changes several times where, like, she accidentally slipped on a like a like a throw rug what one of the stories was or another one of the times she she told it it was on a towel and she also said that like she was carrying a knife she was slicing the pizza while she was picking their dog up that was urinating and putting feces all over itself which the dog was doing this outside so you would want to keep it outside right but she carried it inside and accidentally slipped and stabbed her husband and to sli- death. And stabbed her husband <laughs> to death. Obviously, that's not true. Um, so basically, this she the story's changed so many times. I mean, who the hell eats pizza at 8.30 in the morning? Like, a, I guess a frozen pizza. I guess they were hungry. Hungover people. I mean. And frozen pizza used to be my uh, hangover cure. And this supposedly isn't the first time the police have been to their house. They supposedly have been there seven times. I guess most of them were, or seven calls, a couple of them were hang-ups, a couple of them were like domestic violence, and I guess the one time uh, her husband broke her arm, and he was taken away. And so then, it was a domestic thing, and, and then she another, stabbed him. Another time she was ran naked to their neighbor's house <gasps> saying her husband threatened her life. They let her in, but then she started breaking and flipping things over in their house and she was later Baker Act and taken to Lakeland Regional Hospital. She so, had a whole bunch of cuckoo. So there's some serious <laughs> things going on in this, this, this like house. Wow. Wow. It's crazy. Psycho as, I mean, who knows? Who, She's psycho. I mean, he could be psycho too. It sounds like it was a. Well, he's dead now, so bad now he's scenario. not psycho. Yeah. What's your next one? My next one is. It's about an emotional pet. Yes, it is about an emotional pet. And, you know, the other day I was working and this guy I, looked to me that he was like in the army or was in some services, had a little, he had a golden retriever that wasn't very obedient, by the way. I mean, I guess it maybe was still training, but it had his little army like backpack on and he, and I was like, oh, and it wasn't the same now, name as the dog because they called it a different name than it was on the backpack. So maybe and i just find like oh wow the emotional support animals they're a real thing but this lady she tried to get on an airplane with a squirrel see this goes back to a couple episodes ago we're talking about how airplanes have changed their uh who the hell would want a squirrel well it's like who the hell wants an emotional support peacock like people are just pressing the limits when it comes to emotional service animals and it's like come on now i mean Squirrels are rodents. Would you really want to live with a squirrel? Well, but uh, anyway, she um, delayed the flight up to two hours, and the people had to get off the plane so they could get this lady off. But my question is, how'd this lady even get through TSA? Those motherfuckers are always trying to get you for something. So you're just gonna TSA. You're just gonna let a squirrel come on through the line? Just gonna let them come in with a squirrel. Oh yeah, this is my pet squirrel. That squirrels might be the end of the not, road. <laughs> squirrels are not emotional support animals. Stop bringing them on planes. Stop bringing anything that's not a dog. I guess you could bring a cat. I guess you could bring a cat. I mean, for cat lovers, I mean, I guess they're emotional. They could help you out there. But I feel like every cat I've ever known was just a bitch and just wanted to yeah. go hide in the corner and do its own thing. How is that helping your emotional support? It's not. Um, 
You want to do your last story and then I'll do mine too? I do want to do my last story. All right. Here's things you are not supposed to do at the library besides watch porn. Porn's not allowed at the library. So this is out of Newport Ritchie, Pasco County, Florida. Dude is arrested for um, trying to sell counterfeit money on Craigslist that he printed off at the library. And he just printed it off on just like resume paper. So this stuff was not very good. Like, and he, according to him, he just in the story, he just wanted to see, you know, what it looked like. But then he uh, gave some to his landlord. That was his mistake. But he was also trying to sell it on Craigslist. Well, and also, like, I worked at a bank one time, and you can feel the difference in fake money. So it's not even like he put any effort into it. He used, like, resume paper. Okay, so it's a little bit thick, but it's not money paper. Like, that's going to be caught within a second. Yeah. So um, he took a free ride to jail. Free ride to jail with your He didn't pass go, and he didn't collect $200 either. So, poor guy. But he found this template on a Pinterest. What a loser. Yeah. All right. I mean, Pinterest is the real deal, but, I mean, I wouldn't go to Pinterest to learn how to make counterfeit money. It is your go. My go. Let's see what my stories are. Um, The first one is something that I can kind of relate to. Remember when we were drunk and we're like, hey, let's, for our 10-year anniversary, have a party and we're going to figure out how to do the um, dirty dancing dance? Yeah, I I don't dance very good, so that didn't really work. I mean, you're you're a superstar dancer, so I mean, you did a great job Neither of us are good dancers, so it never would have worked. But when, you know, you've had a tied a few on it seemed like a good idea at the we time actually practiced the dance i think we even downloaded like youtube videos and we tried to like like synchronize it 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 was honestly i wish we could have got it on videotape yeah it was probably are. really hilarious we could have probably could have probably put it on youtube and people would have been like we'd probably be making money off the hits we'd be getting from this shit probably just because it's a comical thing yeah if you're going to try and recreate the infamous dirty dancing lift scene there are a few prerequisites to consider one space you need a lot of it two the person playing the role of patrick Swayze, should have some solid upper body strength he should look like me <laughs> yes so he should definitely you look are like the role me. model of upper body strength and three ideally you're sober Fine motor skills are key here. This was not quite the case during a recent arrest in Florida. Go ahead and make your Florida jokes now. I'll wait. Yes, this is actually what the article says. A few weeks ago, a 24-year-old woman was arrested in Jensen Beach, Florida, after attempting to recreate a scene from Dirty Dancing in a total wine store. According to the T.C. Palm, a local newspaper, deputies were called to the store in response to two individuals who were believed to be intoxicated and causing a disturbance. Per the report, the manager said the two women. Oh, so one was a woman, and we they were know, both women. We know like women don't have upper body strength unless like mm. you're a bodybuilder. Um, they were trying to recreate it, and then the cops were called. The women were also trying to buy alcohol through the man, though the manager refused service and asked them to leave. According to the report, both women tried to re-enter the store. One woman was arrested on disorderly intoxication. Blah blah blah. But anyway. You are drunk and want to do the dirty dancing dance. I suggest you don't do it in a wine store. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can break. I mean, it's pretty much all glass in a wine store. You're going to break something. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I mean, how could you even, did you have like a a iPod that was playing the music? I mean, you got to have the music to get into it. Yeah. You can't just not like. Are they doing it without music? I mean, did they have their boom box on their shoulder while they were doing it? All like 80s style? I don't know. Who knows? Because the story's, you know, incomplete. Could be like when Will Smith came up on the, you know, when he was in uh, that show. Yes, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah, he had a boom box. So this story came in late last night, but it's one of those. I'm like, even though our outline was quote unquote closed, I'm like, you have to add this. A Florida man is accused of cutting off a man's penis and 
throwing it over the fence. Mm, that sounds painful. <laughs> but however, this story is out of Chicago. Chicago. A judge has granted a one million bond to a Florida man accused of cutting off the penis of his ex girlfriend's new boyfriend. Justin well, Foster. You shouldn't have put that thing where you shouldn't have put it. <laughs> I mean, it's her new boyfriend. Justin Foster, 28, of Tallahassee, remains at the Cook County Jail on an attempted murder charge. Authorities say Foster flew from Atlanta to Chicago and then rented a car and drove to Des Plaines, Illinois, to confront a 26-year-old man who was dating his former girlfriend. Prosecutors claim that Foster approached the man on the street, hit him in the head with a tire iron, carved initials into his leg, and then cut off his penis before throwing his penis over the fence. Wow, that takes some serious dedication. You caught a flight, you got a rental car, then you hit somebody with a tire iron. Tire I mean, iron. the whole temporary insanity defense is out the door because you had to fly from Atlanta to Chicago, drive to where you're going, and still do it. So temporary insanity is not going to work here. You may have just been totally insane. Totally insane. That may have worked. All right. Well, that's all our Florida stories. Let's move on to our sports segment. Yeah, let's move on to sports. Sports segment. What you got, Beb? Well, let's start with the Buccaneers because one of our listeners said we should talk about the Bucks in sports. So. Shout out Devin. Yeah, Devin um, is a Devin is a like the world's best Bucks fan. He is a ride or die. No matter if they are losing, no matter if they're winning, like he is there. No matter if he, they do stuff that he disagrees with on a political level, he is still supporting his team, whether he agrees with them or not, whether he is mad that they're losing or not. And now he has landed his dream job as now he's a dang flag runner for the Bucks. Yeah, that sounds like fun. He gets to hang I mean, out on the field the and poster you know, boy of Bucks fans. Uh, yeah, so it's fun. But anyway, they got a chance to win this week. They play the Falcons. They Falcons have no defense just like the Bucks, so it should be a shootout. Um I don't Go Bucks. I heard rumors. I was listening to the Drew Garabo show that should Winston not do good, and Fitz Magic, his magic has fizzled. That they m- w- kind of want to try the third quarterback, yeah. Ryan Griffin. I heard that um, Jameis Winston is going to have to be shitty for a couple games for this to go on. So if he throws three interceptions in the first half, who do they then substitute in for? I Fitz like, Magic no. or Ryan Griffin? I Jameis Winston's playing. Every single snap, even bearing, throws, a, bearing like, an injury to, tomorrow. Even if he throws three, yep. four he interceptions. He throws five interceptions in the first half. He's playing every snap of the game, bearing injury. Well, that was an interesting take. So, um, he's their future, I guess. I mean, it's tough to get like young quarterbacks that have talent. He has talent. He just hasn't put it all together yet. I mean, mm. Who are they going to get next year other than him? I mean, they have to sign him. I mean, who do they who are they, who are they going to sign? I mean, he's I the know. best available. I guess. So, you got you, I mean, I guess you I mean, I guess in a couple weeks they could try this other guy. I mean, but Well, I guess we'll see tomorrow. Yeah, he's playing every snap unless he gets hurt. So. Can we talk about the Thursday night game and how what big dick Eli Manning sucks? Yeah, he does suck He big. fucking sucks. And you know what? It pisses me off because from a fantasy football point of view, I have Odell Beckham, and he cannot get the ball because Eli Manning sucks dick so bad that e- Odell has no chance of getting the ball. Yeah. Um, and you know what, Eli? It's time to retire. Your best years are behind you. Your brother's outshined you. Like, time to just call it quits. And you know it's bad when your home team boos you throughout the entire game well the thing is he won them two super bowls but a long time ago and guess what he's sucked ever since and this totally falls on ownership last year the coach tried to bench him and the owner basically said no eli may is a quarterback and he came back a week later I don't okay. remember when they started Geno Smith and it was like an uproar. Oh, I mean, I mean my God, Geno I'm Smith not saying, is not as good as Eli Manning. I, I would kind of be pissed too. I'm not saying that's exactly what happened. 
but I have to, you know, just look at the scenario. Um, he be- was benched one week. He came back the next week. And then all of a sudden, the next year, the coach is fired. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the owner was pissed that he was benched. And I mean, I can well, see it, but it's be, time to move on. It's I, time to move on. I would be pissed, too, if he was benched for Geno Smith. Because well, Geno Smith sucks dick almost as much as Almost Eli. as much as Eli Almost made. as much. And, I mean, that's a tall order. Yeah. All right. That's all the sports I had. Yeah. I just want to talk about Eli Manning sucking dick. And um, our Broncos are pretty bad, too. Uh, the they... Bron- Speaking of sucking dick, the Broncos are doing it, too. They're about to get killed by the Rams this week. <sighs> We're going to only win, I was going to say, four games this year. And but we've you know already what? won two. Already won two. But you know what? When we decide to become Broncos fans, we are in it for thick or thin. We are. We luckily joined at a right time, but we are not abandoning them because yep. they are our boys. Swag Chad Kelly, I'm rooting for you, man. You're going to be in in the next couple of weeks. Show us, we, holding, show us you can be our quarterback. I'm still holding on hope for nice teeth. Yep, he's a journeyman. Not going to make it happen. Case Keenum. Case you don't even know Keenum. his name. No, I did, but I couldn't. I was having a brain fart. Yeah, he sucks. But he has nice teeth, so. All right, let's move on. Our next segment is... What the fuck? What the fuck? All right, Greg, you go first. This is out of Houston. Houston. And I just want to say that this story has been on our radar for the past few weeks, but our outline has been so crazy busy that we didn't fit it in. But now's a good time to fit it in. Houston officials block sex doll brothel. Hmm. So it's not just a brothel, but it's a brothel full of not hookers, but sex dolls. And they're like lively sex dolls. Like they look like real people. I bet it's pretty creepy. Yeah. So, okay. My question is, and we had this discussion a little bit before, do people have to use condoms on this sex doll? Because it's a sex doll, but like, surely, and is how it are a they... full size sex doll? Yeah, they're having sex with it. Well, I didn't know if it was like a. Like so, a... do you have to use a condom because, like, I don't know, like, are does it go to the laundry machine after it's done, or does well, it's plastic, everybody... or it's like robotic, like it's a robotic sex doll. It's not. So it's, it's like not... a robot. Wow. Yeah, it's not just a plastic like robots like versus blow wrestlers. Up. It's not just a blow up sex doll. Like it's a robotic sex doll. Wow, so a, crazy. how are they cleaning that? And b, do you have to use a condom with these sex dolls? Well, my Who opinion knows? is you probably should. And people are like, come on, can you not spend money on sex robots? That's, wow, it's the technology these days. Technology these days. We went from inflatable blow-up dolls to now we have sex robots. I wonder how these robots are. I mean, it's serious. We have a picture of one. We do have a picture of one. We'll post that on our Instagram page. Continue with your story. Well, anyway. If, if there's anything left. Really isn't a lot left. We kind of craved all the way through it. Besides, like, they shut it down, right? Yeah, well, they, of course they shut it down because I guess it's it's frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it's frowned upon. Oh, and it's just, well, let's talk about paying for sex. I saw those hookers the other day. The or, Russian hookers? The Russian the hookers. The Russian hookers came back? Yeah, they were chilling. Though. Were they with the same guys or no, new guys? No, I don't think they were hooking. I mean, They, they were on been, their off day? They, I mean, maybe they weren't even, maybe they weren't hookers to begin with. Who knows? They, are, they seem to be regulars from out here. And and I, I don't know, maybe they weren't, maybe they weren't hooking, hooking. Maybe they were just hooking that one day. Maybe. maybe. They, I mean, so who knows? All right. They were drinking their Chardonnay, though. I saw it. All right, so my what the fuck story is a gender reveal party ends in a fight outside of Applebee's. Well, well let's just let's, <laughs> let's stop right there. First of all, first of all, gender reveal parties overplayed, done. Like it's way too much. Like guess what? Enough of the gender reveal parties. Just tell people. Send them a text. And it's at Applebee's. And Ooh. then you're having one at Applebee's. I mean, they were probably. All drunk off the dollar margaritas or dollar Long Islands that they serve there. They have dollar Long Islands. Well, they run promotions. I I want I want to. Oh, right now they're doing dollar zombies. All right, doesn't matter. It's just I mean, can you imagine that? Just I'm sure people just go in there and get drink. 
25 of them. And I mean, right, just... let me read the story. A gender reveal party at Applebee's ended in police breaking up a fight outside of the restaurant. Police were dispatched to the chain's Boardman, Ohio location after a fight between guests and restaurant staff escalated outside over who would clean up the mess. A uh, manager of the chain's location said guests intended to reveal the baby, the gender of the baby by using confetti poppers inside the restaurant. That's fucking original. Like, can you just like cut a cake? And not make a mess. Um, there it is. Clean it up. She asked a party of about 20 to do the reveal outside so it would not disturb the other patrons. Patrons. After the reveal, blue confetti litter. Surprise, it's a boy. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Blue confetti littered the sidewalk and nearby vehicles. That's when the manager asked the party goers to clean up the mess. Some of the attendees began yelling at the manager and another employee. Police said two members of the group threw menus at a hostess who was hit several times. Oh, okay. So I just want to say, stop having gender reveal parties. They have ran their course. And it's sh- done. shame on you, manager, for telling them to clean that shit up. Do you want to clean up confetti at the end of the day? Who wants to clean up confetti but their patrons of your restaurant? Who probably spent the very minimal amount that they had to and tip 10%. Well, this is true. Yeah. You're- but you can't be you can't be telling them to clean up. The, I guess you, you could. can. You could, yeah, and then you get then they want to fight your and ass, then, and then you make national news. Yeah. All right, so that's it for what the fuck story. So let's chase this what the fuckery down with some sweet sweet stories with our "Don't worry, be happy" segment. Don't worry, be happy now. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. The first story comes from us from Moody, Alabama. A longtime custodian had quite the surprise at the Alabama Elementary School where he works. Third grade students and teachers at Moody Elementary, located about 20 miles east of Birmingham, decided to have an assembly in his honor of National Custodial Workers Recognition Day. I didn't know there was such a thing. That's pretty cool, though. Yep. If you're a custodian. I mean, custodians are pretty underpaid cool. and overworked, and they are amazing. Mr. Eugene, as the students affectionately call him, often gives fist bumps to the children walking down the hall, and he asks every teacher how their day is. Teacher Andrea Ord told Mr. Eugene about a big mess in the gym that had to be taken care of right away. She captured the moment on her phone as he walked into the gym, cheering children, realize, realizing it was assembly to recognize him. I totally lost it. I wasn't expecting it at all. So I think there's a video. We're going to play this. Hold on. It's a, the video says, shh, it's a surprise as they pan to all the kids. He's getting his mop ready. It's just, a, it's a little accident. He just peed his pants. So we got a little accident. It's in the back corner. <laughs> oh, they really like that guy, huh? And he starts crying. He starts bowing, saying thank you. And they're cheering for him as he walks in. Standing ovation. Yeah. Oh, a little teary-eyed. <laughs> then he goes around and gives them all high fives. <laughs> a little oh, teary-eyed. Look at my eyes. <laughs> I do see your eyes. I can't even believe that was one of those days. One of those days. All right, what you got? I got... Can we pause so I can grab me another drink? I'm fresh out. Yeah. Okay. Pausing. All right, I got my drink. I'm ready to go. What do you have? Nike surprises runner with cerebral palsy by offering a professional contract. So, 
this guy Zoom Magic on his Instagram. This is what he put. Today on World Seropalsy Awareness Day, I reached a mi- cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy. I reached a milestone in my runny journey. Today, I made Nike history and became the very first athlete with cerebral palsy. To cerebral palsy. S- okay, <laughs> to sign a contract with Nike. You don't realize how realistic and emotional your dreams are until they play out before your very eyes. Signing this contract was a huge success for me, and I would not have made it without my friends, family, and teammates. This was perhaps the most emotional moment in my seven years of running. Aww. Growing up with a disability, the thought of becoming a professional athlete is, as I have said before, like the thought of climbing Mount Everest. It is definitely possible, but the odds are most definitely not in your favor. Hard work pays off. Hundreds of miles, blood, sweat, and tears had led me along the way with it few permanent scars but the journey is damn sure not over looking back i would guess there is only a few select people who would see me where i am today i have gone through just about everything in the book to be where i'm at today i was once a kid in leg braces who could barely put a foot in front of the other now i've signed a contract with nike running trust the process and most of all trust in god god is good Thank you to all my friends, family, and teammates on the running club. And now a brand new... Oh, my God. God. (laughs) Fucking emergency alert. Damn Amber Alerts. Way to ruin the mood. But anyway, trust in God. God is good. And thank you to all my friends, family, and teammates on the running club. And now a brand new atmosphere on teammates with Nike. This moment will live forever. Thank you, everyone, for helping the show the world that there is no such thing as a disability this is riveting shit greg's a little tear eyed right I mean, now this kid <laughs> greg doesn't tear up very often it's just pouring his heart out <laughs> i love when greg gets choked up so. yeah and you guys have to see the video um i'm gonna try and put it on our website page so go to www.podfellowsunshine.com under our Don't Worry, Be Happy segment, and I'm going to post the whole video of when he's running and he crosses the line and is presented with the, um, yeah, contract. And reading the story is emotional enough, but seeing the video is even better. That wasn't the story. That was what he wrote himself oh, on his Instagram. His Instagram, I don't follow Instagram, but I I would think this is something he posted. This yeah. isn't no re- reporter. Okay. This is from the heart. So. From the heart. All right. Well, it's about time to wrap this shindig up. And so let's wrap it up like we always do with a joke from the boys. Boys! <laughs> it's joke with the boys. And I have to give a shout out to Auntie Romano. She provided this joke for the boys, and Blake won the rock, paper, scissors, and now he gets to do it, because it's a good one. Rock, paper, scissors, more like I forced him to give it. Okay, get up to the mic. How do you fix a broken pumpkin? How do you fix a broken pumpkin? With a pumpkin patch. With a pumpkin patch. I get that one. Ha ha. All right, Gavin, get up closer to the microphone. Okay, do y'all know the Saints and the Vikings game? Can you uh, get closer? Do you know the Saints and the Vikings game? In the playoffs? Yes. The Sa- yes. I have a Saints joke. Oh, but I lost it at the last second. <laughs> oh my god! Best joke ever! <laughs> He has a joke about the Saints and Vikings game, the playoff game. I had it, but I lost it at the last second. <laughs> and if any of you follow NFL from last year, that is a royally fucked up joke, but hilarious nonetheless. That's, I think, out of all the jokes you've ever told, that's my favorite. Thank you. <laughs> Good jokes. Oh, my God. Ow, that was so great. All right, go on. All right. Well, that wraps up another episode of Pod Full of Sunshine. We want to thank all our 
our new listeners. We want to thank our loyal listeners. And we want you to tell a friend about us. Go to iTunes, review us. Tell two friends. Tell two friends. Review us. Five stars only, though. If you're going to give below five stars, just don't bother. Yeah. Just don't bother. Follow us on Instagram at Podful of Sunshine. We are also found on Twitter at Podful of Sunshine, but no E at the end. Um, and our website is www.podfellowsunshine.com. And let's continue to see these numbers rise because, I mean, the past few weeks have been pretty badass. Yeah, we're super awesome. We have one particular episode that hit 65 views or listens. Woo! Yeah! Also, go find us on YouTube, um, Podful of Sunshine. That's P O D F U L of Sunshine. You'll be able to see us. They were there. We will most likely have this episode up on Podful of Sunshine. And uh, I guess, do you have anything else, Greg? No. Thanks for uh, listening. Um, tune in again next week. Uh, we'll be here. Same time, same place. Might be a better episode, too. It could be better. But this one's pretty good, so. I mean, it was solid. Solid. All right. We'll see everyone next week. Bye, y'all. See you later. Y'all come back now. Cheers.